Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Andrew's Animation. Now I've decided going forward I want to reformat my videos a little bit. And I'll be doing themes for each video now. Just to shake it up a little. And also it gives me a lot more focus on what I want to present to you guys. So for my first theme, I've decided to talk to you guys about the films of Ralph Bakshi. Ralph Bakshi made animated films in the 70s and 80s primarily. And his films were vastly different from the Disney films that were coming out during that time. His were very much more geared towards adults. Before I get into the filmography, I'm going to put, put a small disclaimer at the front of this, just so you guys are aware. Bakshi's films cover a wide variety of topics and themes. His earliest films are probably where people would have issue. Now, if they were taken at face value, people would probably label his earliest films as racist and very much degrading to minorities because of how they're depicted. The fact is, is that Bakshi isn't racist and he has nothing against minorities at all. Bakshi chose to depict minorities the way he did as satire and to also shove it back in people's faces and show them, look how ridiculous and awful and just overall outrageous your stereotypes and caricatures of these people have been. If you go to watch his earlier films, know that there's going to be some stuff that might shock you. Just go into it remembering that it is satire. That was Bakshi's aim, was to be satirical. Not hurtful, not harmful in any way, shape, or form. It was purely meant to cause a stir amongst people and to put things in a new light for them. So I'll go ahead and jump into the filmography and we'll start with Bakshi's first feature and that is Fritz the Cat. Now if you can't tell by the poster, Fritz the Cat is very much not a kid's movie. It is very adult. In fact, it is the first X-rated animated feature to ever be released. And it certainly is a wild ride for a movie. I mean, this is a movie that all the characters are animals, very much like Disney films, but instead of going off on an adventure and making friends and singing songs. Instead, we have our main character, Fritz, going around getting high, getting drunk, having sex, getting caught up in violence, riots, revolution. So very much not a Disney film. Now, there's not a ton of story to this movie, in my personal opinion. It just starts with the main character trying to get laid, and then it moves to there being parties and going to bars and then it starts to move into the more radical stuff of Fritz incites a street riot and helps start a revolution in the city and it just goes way way out there and all this surrounding this cat who is at heart just trying to have fun and wanting to be entertained. This is a strange movie for sure, but it was entertaining too. Not Bakshi's best by any means, but quite the way to push into the animation industry, if I do say so myself. I mean, how much bigger of a commotion can you make than putting out an X-rated film right off the bat? I would have to give Fritz the Cat three out of five stars myself, and I'll definitely be picking it up when it gets released on Blu-ray in a few months. After Fritz the Cat, Bakshi made a film called Heavy Traffic. Heavy Traffic follows a cartoonist as he starts up a relationship with a bartender, and everything he goes to through to try and make money and make a career for himself. It definitely was a step up story-wise compared to Fritz the Cat, and it was a little more entertaining as well. And it was very interesting to see how the animation changed ever so slightly now that we were doing human characters rather than animals. And it very much painted a picture of New York in the 70s as well. It was very, very interesting to watch for sure. I'd give that one three and a half out of five stars. Bakshi's films aren't too good when it comes to substance, but they are still really entertaining to watch. And that's gonna go for just about all the films in here. The next film that came out is probably would be the most controversial one, which is probably why it's hardly seen the light of day since its release, and that is Coonskin. This is the movie that really nailed in the point that Bakshi was about satire. This film was interesting in the fact that it was actually a mixture of animation and live action. And it's done pretty well, actually. 
We follow the main character who rises through the streets of Harlem to take over a crime syndicate and wipe the mafia off the map so that he can control the city. It's an interesting story all around, and going into it knowing that it was meant to be satire, I could definitely see it a lot easier, because if I had known it was satirical, I probably would have been really weirded out by a lot of what was in the film. And it was also very interesting to see the choices of style that were used throughout, especially with the mixture of animation and live action footage. I would definitely give Coonskin three and a half out of five stars as well. There's a lot of cool stuff to it, but it is still pretty light in substance, but still a very enjoyable film. Now after these first three films, Bakshi decided he wanted to take a different turn and actually went into doing fantasy films. And the next couple films were actually kid friendly. They were only rated PG, each of them, which was very much different compared to his other films. So with his dive into fantasy, the next film that Bakshi made was Wizards. This was his original contribution to the fantasy genre, and it is a very interesting film to say the least. The story goes that humanity, of course, nuked itself into oblivion, and out of the ashes of desolation, the magical creatures of the world that had been hidden for centuries came back to the surface and took over Earth again. And then thousands of years down the line, we now have a full society with fairies and goblins and wizards and it's a classic good versus evil story. The interesting aspect of it is that the villain psychs up his armies by showing them old Nazi propaganda footage that he found in a pile of rubble. And it is bizarre to say the least, but it does the trick for them, obviously, because they then go on to rampage through, through the world. It was definitely an interesting foray into doing something more family friendly, but I'd honestly give it three out of five stars. There could have been more world building, there could have been more depth to the characters, but it was still an entertaining watch. If you have the chance to view it, I would, I would say go ahead, especially if you like fantasy films. It's always good to get a well-rounded education in the, kind, in the different fantasy worlds that people have taken the time to create. After Wizards, Bakshi took a turn at doing an adaptation of a well-known fantasy novel. And this it might be the film that most people recognize when it comes to Ralph Bakshi, even if they don't know that it's Ralph Bakshi. And that one is the animated adaptation of The Lord of the Rings. If you are a fan of the books like I am, then you probably know, have known about this one for quite some time. Now this adaptation is very interesting, honestly, because it covers only the first two books in the trilogy. I guess Bakshi figured that they would make the second part later down the road and that just never happened for him. But it's also Bakshi's foray into rotoscoping. Now if you don't know what rotoscoping is, that's when they actually film people and then they take the frames and draw over the people, thus giving the animation a much more lifelike movement. And you can tell that when you watch rotoscoping. The movements of characters seem to be a lot more fluid versus regular animation. And honestly, rotoscoping was like the granddaddy of motion capture tech because that's essentially what we do now is that we film someone and then animate over them with just a lot better animation than what, what used to be done. Rotoscoping was essentially the first step to where we are now with motion capture. And it was very interesting and, they, and Bakshi used it to very good effect with a lot of characters, with the fight scenes and the massive armies of orcs and it is very much a fun watch. It is definitely nothing compared to Peter Jackson's trilogy, but it is still well worth your time, especially if you are a fan of Lord of the Rings. Definitely check it out. It is bizarre and weird, but it is a fun adaptation. And while it does leave it open-ended since we never got to see what Bakshi would have done for Return of the King, 
it is still enjoyable and is still well worth the time. I give that one three and a half stars. I'm probably a little biased in that rating just because I love Peter Jackson's movies so much. Honestly, it is still a matter of you took two of the three books and crammed it into, what is it? You crammed it into two hours. So very much compressed, but it is still really fun to watch. But I'll stop there before I keep carrying on about this. I can geek out about Lord of the Rings for far too long, honestly. So we'll just go ahead and jump to the next film. After his foray into fantasy, Bakshi stepped back towards slightly more adult-oriented film, though not nearly to the extreme that he had done in the beginning of his career. His next film was called American Pop. Now this film focused on a single family through four separate generations and each generation's of involvement with music. And this film starts in like the early 1900s and goes all the way up to the early 1980s. So that's a wide range of musical history to go through. And I mean, it starts with the first family member being involved in like vaudeville and then gets to the end where the last family member is involved in you know the 80s rock scene and it is such a journey honestly personally i think this might be my favorite bakshi film just because it is such a unique story especially to follow through this family's journey as we see the evolution of music and the evolution of this family as well. I give this one three and a half out of five stars. The story could have had a little more meat to it. I think if Bakshi had maybe made this movie a little longer and a little more drawn out with some of the characters, I think I would have liked it even more because that's what I wanted. I wanted more of it. There just wasn't enough. It's only an hour and a half long and I definitely could have used at least another 10, 15 minutes of just diving into the music and the people and it overall either way is a very enjoyable film and I would definitely recommend watching that one if you can find it this one's a little tricky to find as well but if you can find it to rent from somewhere do so it's very much worth the time it's a, a unique vision this is another one that Bakshi did with rotoscoping and it is just fun to watch and has quite a bit of drama to it and it is just really really good after American Pop, the next one to come out was called Hey Good Lookin'. This one took place in the 1950s and follows the leader of a street gang. It bounces between his leadership of this gang and keeping them out of trouble while also trying to woo this girl that has just moved back into the neighborhood. And it is very interesting to see the dynamics and it is again more adult oriented, not nearly to the extreme like before but very much adult still. This is another one of Bakshi's films that dives into New York and he obviously has a deep love for the city. It is just really a delight to watch. This one I also give three and a half out of five to. It is an enjoyable watch. The characters could have used more depth to them. I think that's my biggest thing with Bakshi's films is that, that none of his characters have a ton of depth to them, but it is still an enjoyable ride nonetheless. If you have the chance to check it out, I would recommend it. After that, we got another dip into the fantasy genre with Fire and Ice. This was another rotoscoping venture for Bakshi. You can tell that with just how fluid some of these characters move. It is another classic good versus evil. It takes place in a much more prehistoric sort of setting I would say. It involves magic as the villain uses ice to try and take over the world and it was very unique to say the least but I guess I expected more out of the story. It really lacked there, it just kind of jumped along. It was almost too simple. It could have used more. It was still fun to watch and see what they could do with the animation but still the story lacked for me personally and I'm really big on story when it comes to animated film if you don't have a good solid story it's gonna take me out of it a bit and unfortunately that did happen for me with this one I still would recommend checking it out if you have the ability I would give this one a three out of five uh, again story wise character depth not not great but I don't know I'll have to give it another watch and maybe that'll 
maybe it'll jump up to three and a half. I'm not sure. <laughs> Either way, still worth checking out and an interesting entry in the fantasy genre for sure. The last feature film that Bakshi made actually came out in 1992. So it was several years after Fire and Ice. He had been taking a bit of a break and this one was another mixture of live action with animation and it's called Cool World. Now if it wasn't obvious on the poster, yes, that is Brad Pitt. I would love to ask him if he really recalls working on this film and what his thoughts were about working on this film. This was early in his career. He had only been acting for like five or six years I think by the point that this came out, something like that. So I would be interested to know his thoughts about working on a film like this, especially because he almost exclusively interacted with the animated characters. Cool World had a very interesting aesthetic because it involved having Brad Pitt being on a set to interact with animated characters. The set was done up in a very interesting way. It was like being inside a painting, really. Everything, when you look at it, is very flat. But when you look at it from the appropriate angle, it looks like there's a ton of stuff around. It makes it almost look 3D. But from other angles, you can tell it is very much, that couch is just a piece of plywood with paint on it and not an actual couch, something like that. And it was very interesting to watch these real people interact with these characters. The main villain of the piece is a character called Hollywood. Obviously she is very much a ripoff of Jessica Rabbit from Who Framed Roger Rabbit, but it is still decently done. Now unfortunately I feel like the story suffered the most because it could have used a little more exposition in a lot of facts as well as just a little more world building, but it was still an interesting film to say the least, especially for the mixture of live action and animation. This was very much Bakshi's answer to Who Framed Roger Rabbit. He just happened to make it a little more adult oriented in his depiction. I would give that one three out of five stars. Solid idea, but it definitely lacked a lot as well. Since 1992, Bakshi hasn't done anything feature length. He has done, I think, a short or two, but he seems to have retired from making feature length animation. You know what, that was probably for the best at that point, just because his particular style of animation and storytelling very much contrasts with the kind of stuff that was coming out by that point and later on up to now. And so it's probably okay that he pulled back and we just have the films that came out. Again, his films are very, very different from the standard Disney fare that was getting released everywhere during these decades. And it is something you have to go into with a pretty open mind just so you make sure that you understand that, that no offense was ever meant with any of his films. But they are all entertaining to say the least. They are all worth checking out. It is very interesting to watch these back to back to see the progression of the animation and Bakshi's storytelling styles. It is... A unique experience to say the least but I'm happy I went with it it was a very much a fun few days trying to pack these in when when and where I could so if you have the ability to watch any of Ralph Bakshi's films do so I recommend it it's definitely an interesting journey to say the least especially if like me you want to find some stuff that maybe isn't so kiddy this is definitely not kid friendly stuff for the most part and it's very much worth checking out just simply for the experience and to get that kind of snapshot of some 70s and 80s animation that is vastly different from anything we'd gotten before. Well, that's everything I have for you today. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any suggestions on some themes I should do, go ahead and leave a comment below. I'm open for suggestions. I've got a couple more lined up that I'll be doing in the near future, and I'm excited to do those with you as well. But I'm definitely looking for suggestions on areas of animation that I should be focusing on, so please leave your suggestions below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I'm so looking forward to seeing you guys on the next one.